Hello friends, this is Glenn Sutton Calm coming back to you again. I'm Pastor Jen's father. We're in a sermon series on learning to listen and what that means. We today are going to be talking about listening and obeying. But before we get into that, let's have a word of prayer. Lord, I thank you so much that you love each one of us. Thank you, Lord. All that you do, I just pray that you'll fill each one of us with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit as I'm speaking so that the words that I say are your words and not mine. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to be talking about the last few days of Jesus being here on this earth and then his ascension to heaven. So if you will turn with me to Acts chapter 1. In my first book, I told you, Theophilus, about everything Jesus began to do and teach until the day that he was taken up into heaven after giving his chosen apostles further instructions through the Holy Spirit. During the 40 days after he suffered and died, he appeared to the apostles from time to time, and he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive, and he talked to them about the kingdom of God. Once when he was eating with them, he commanded them, Do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift that he's promised, as I told you before. John baptized with water, but in just a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and to restore our kingdom? He replied, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. After this, he was taken up into a cloud while they were watching, and they could no longer see him. As they strained to see him rising into heaven, Two white-robed men suddenly stood among them. Men of Galilee, they said. Why are you standing there staring into heaven? Jesus has just been taken from you into heaven, but someday he will return from heaven in the same way that you saw him go. So here's what's happening. For 40 days after Jesus' crucifixion and his resurrection, he meets with the disciples from time to time. And he is giving them more understanding of what the kingdom of God is about but he's also giving them a, the great commission he's telling them that they're going to be preaching this good news of Jesus's resurrection to the whole world starting in Jerusalem going throughout Judea going into Samaria and then to the ends of the earth but he says before you do this because you can't do it on your own you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit he said John baptized with water, but I told you that you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So you need to wait until that happens. Now Jesus takes him out to the Mount of Olives, and as he's giving them the last instructions, he starts floating up into heaven. And while the disciples are looking up, two angels come and say, Jesus is going to come back. The same way you saw him going into heaven, he's going to come back the same way. So what do the disciples do? So if we continue on, in verse 12, then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, a distance of a half a mile. When they arrived, they went to the upstairs room of the home where they were staying. And here are the names of those who were present. Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, the zealot, Judas, the son of James, not Judas Iscariot that betrayed Jesus, Judas, the son of James. They all met together and were constantly united in prayer, along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and several other women, and the brothers of Jesus. After Jesus is taken into heaven and the two angels come down, and they say, you know, what are you looking at? Jesus is in heaven, but he will return. They then go into Jerusalem, and they do as Jesus told them to do. They return to the place where they've been staying, and they're praying. 
And the first day goes by, and they're praying. You know, and the angel said, Jesus is going to come back. But Jesus said he's going to fill us with the Holy Spirit. So maybe if he fills us today, he can come back tomorrow. <laughs> but the second day passes, there's still nothing, and they're praying. But not only are they praying for the Holy Spirit, they're praying for their lives because the Jewish leadership are still mad at them. They, weren't, they aren't happy that they're still around. And so they're scared. They're worried about what's going to happen to them. They're getting anxious. They're still praying for the Holy Spirit. And more days go by. And so I get the picture of Peter. And Peter's always the one who's got to be doing something. When they came to arrest Jesus, Peter was the one who whipped out a sword and cut off the servant's ear because he had to try to do something. He couldn't just sit around. So here we are. Jesus had told him to go back to Jerusalem and wait until the Holy Spirit fell on them. They needed that power. But Peter's needing to do something. <laughs> so he makes a suggestion. And so we're going to continue on in verse 15. During this time when about 120 believers were together in one place, Peter stood up and addressed them, saying, Brothers, the scriptures had to be fulfilled concerning Judas. And this was predicted long ago by the Holy Spirit, speaking through King David. Judas was one of us and shared with the ministry with us. That's the end of verse 17. If you continue on in the chapter, it talks about you know, what happened to Judas. But then picking back up in the last part of verse 20, it also says, let someone else take his position. So now we must choose a replacement for Judas among the men who were with us from the entire time that we were traveling with the Lord Jesus. From the time that he was baptized by John until the day he was taken from us. Whoever is chosen will join us as a witness of Jesus' resurrection. And so they nominated a couple guys and they prayed and they cast lots and they selected Matthias to replace Judas. Now this was giving them something to do. It wasn't necessarily what Jesus told them to do because Jesus told them to be praying for the Holy Spirit. And we never see in the Bible that God had directed them to choose a replacement for Judas. But they felt that because there had been 12 special ones that there should be 12 going forwards. And so they did elect Matthias. God didn't tell them they were wrong, but we really don't hear anything more about Matthias in the rest of the Bible. So they've been waiting and praying and it's getting longer and longer. Day nine is happening. And they're still, you know, they're still scared. They're still not sure what it means to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. But they're praying for it and they're saying, well, I'm sure we'll know when it happens. So continuing on in chapter 2, verse 1. On the day of Pentecost, which was 10 days later, because Pentecost is a Jewish holiday that falls 50 days after Passover. And so Jesus, after on his resurrection day, he was with the disciples for 40 days on and off. And he told them, then he ascended to heaven and he told them to go back to Jerusalem. So they go back there and they're praying and they're waiting. So 10 days have passed. Now on the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. This is verse 2 of Acts 2. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven, like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames of or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Now if you stop and think for a minute what it must have been like. You're in a room where the wind's blowing, it's noisy, and fire is all around. It looks like there's flames coming out of everybody's head, but nobody's getting burned. It's almost like it was back in Moses' time when God appeared to him in the burning bush. The bush was on fire, but it didn't burn up. There's fire all around them. The house is not getting burned up. 
The people aren't getting burned up. But it's a special manifestation. In my mind, that'd be pretty awesome. <laughs> it also reminds me of Daniel's three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they got thrown in the furnace by King Nebuchadnezzar. They put three in, and then Nebuchadnezzar sees four, and he says the fourth one looks like the Son of God. And when they came out, well, they had been walking around in the fire first, and when they came out, the fire burned up the ropes, but didn't burn their clothes, didn't burn their hair, they didn't singe them. They were completely protected. So when the Holy Spirit fell on the, the apostles in the upper room, they were protected, but they were also receiving something very special, God's presence with them. So continuing on in verse 5, At that time there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running, and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be, they exclaimed. These men are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. Here we are, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Pontus, the province of Asia, Figra, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the areas of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans, and Arabs. And we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things that God has done. They stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean, they asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, oh, they're just drunk, that's all. When the mighty windstorm happened and the fire came down and was in the building and around the building, it drew a large crowd of people, devout Jews. They were in Jerusalem because they wanted to be closer to God. Apparently, either the disciples left the building or they could hear them from inside, but they could hear the apostles preaching to them in their own native tongues. And it was really amazing because they heard the apostles saying about all the wonderful things that God has done. And the people were really awed. And if you were to continue on in this chapter, it tells us that at the end of the day, more than 3,000 believed and were baptized. But you can read that on your own. One of the things that I want to make clear is that the Holy Spirit in this initial outpouring only fell on those who had obeyed Jesus. And they were together in the upper room praying. It had taken 10 days. But they had obeyed Jesus and they were there and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. But we know that there were more believers than that because Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 6 that Jesus appeared to many different people and he also appeared to over 500 people at one time in one place. So there were a lot of people who were believers. But on this day, only a smaller group received the special outpouring of the Holy Spirit. How many were there? Well, if we go back to verse or chapter 1 and verses 13 through 15, yeah, when they arrived back in Jerusalem, they went to the upstairs room of the house where they were staying. Here are the names of those who were present. Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Altheus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all met together and were constantly united in prayer, along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and several other women, and the brothers of Jesus. Now, the brothers of Jesus could have been his physical brothers, or it could have been other fellow believers, brother believers in the faith. And it was during this time when 120 believers were together in one place that Peter stood up and addressed them. And that's when they decided to elect Matthias as the 12th apostle. The numbers that actually received the initial outpouring of the Holy Spirit could have been anywhere from 12 to 20 to 120. We don't know the exact number. The exact number is not important. But what is important is that this was the group that was meeting together on a daily basis. They were doing what Jesus had told them to do, to go back and wait in Jerusalem and 
to be praying for the Holy Spirit to come. This doesn't mean that other, the other believers didn't receive the Holy Spirit because we know from the New Testament that they did. They just didn't receive this initial outpouring. I believe that each and every one of us can receive the Holy Spirit in our lives. And I believe that in order to do that, we need to be praying, we need to be studying, but we also need to be meeting with fellow believers because we need the support of other people who are like-minded. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that as we do, as we listen, as we obey and pray, that God will come into our heart and fill our hearts. Lord, we thank you so much that you have been with us as we've been talking. And I just pray that you'll give each and every person that's hearing this the understanding that you want them to have. Guide each of their hearts and come into all of our hearts and help us, most importantly, to share you with everybody that we're around and to be ready to meet you when you come. These things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This sermon would have aired on Friday, November 10, at 6 o'clock on Facebook. If you would like to meet with us in person, we will be meeting in Chantilly, Virginia, at Greater Than I, at 12 o'clock on Saturday, November 11, at noon. And if you can't be there in person, you can also join us via Zoom. All you have to do to be on the Zoom link is to text the word STUDY, 301-321-8848, and you'll receive the link to be on the Zoom call. Again, it's 301-321-8848, and text the word STUDY. We thank you and look forward to seeing you.